Hi folks. It's not going to be a huge long one today because I've got lots and lots and lots of stuff going on. If you've been following along during the week, you know that uh, my grandpa has been in hospital the past couple of weeks, well past week or so. So I've been back and forth there quite a bit over the last few weeks, trying to get stuff sorted out, trying to... Um, uh, my mum's doing a, an incredible job down there, but, you know, she does need a bit of help. So, that's been me <clears throat> past couple of weeks. So, I haven't, haven't had a lot of time to be doing um, full-on recordings like this because, along with the teaching stuff, YouTube kind of takes a back seat, to be honest with you, when it comes to, like, real-life things. But, you know, hopefully you forgive me and we can move on with some hobby nightmares today. There aren't very many. There are only two because um, these are two that I, I wanted when I when I get I give my little reading team a brief. And I say that this is what I want from the mailbag, and they come up with some stuff for me to go over. So, what I've got are two hobby nightmares that I've been told are light, fluffy, but still funny. So, we'll jump into them and see where we go. Uh, Nate first says, uh, "Good day, Northern, from across the pond." Cheers, mate. Uh, I had a nightmare regarding my second ever game of 40k. Five years ago, I started reading lore and books and fell in love with the, set with the setting. After reading so much, I decided to start collecting Admech. That's fair enough. That's my first army. To be fair, like, them in ninth, that is a hell of a job to take on because they have so many rules and they are basically poster child for how ninth edition lost its way, at least for me. Anyway, moving on. I felt like I couldn't play until I had everything painted. Well, I got deployed and never got time to play or paint. Oh, you're in the armed forces. All right, fair enough. Seeing the new Angron and World Eaters, I decided to collect and paint World Eaters. I did the stupid thing of buying 2,000 points of models straight away. That's not stupid if you can afford it. it, it it's, it's the affording part that I think is a bit, you know, going beyond the pale. But anyway, after months of painting tutorials, classes... I finally had everything painted and ready to play. I walked into my friendly local hobby shop, and the first impression was kind of what I expected, as the only game happening at the time was between two very large individuals, one of which was calling the other an assortment of colourful adje uh, adjectives. Oh God. While holding out a rule book and pointing something out in the rules, let's call him uh, Mr. T. All right. A brief aside... After meeting this guy, he's a fierce sweetheart and a lion of a friend, but he doesn't stay calm when he knows you know better. Important fact for later. But I found the guy he was here who was showing me uh, my first game. What? Oh, but I had found the guy who was going to be showing me my first game. It was against Dark Eldar. I lost, but I had a blast. A spectator seeing our game offered to play me. Let's call him Jeff. Looking back, the Dark Eldar player said it wasn't a good idea, and I should have listened, but I was so excited to play, I just accepted there and then. This is when I found out that Imperial Knights are hilariously built to handle World Eaters, which I didn't know. Okay. Well, World Eaters don't really have weapons that can really chew through tanks, because they're using axes and shit. <laughs> so, they're basically just running up to it and kicking it to death. While, seeing up the, while setting up the board, Jeff purposefully didn't use terrain, saying it was too advanced a mechanic for a noob to understand. Yet this happens all the time. I think the main, the main cheating thing I see on the channel that comes up is people not, either not setting up terrain properly, setting it up so it only benefits them, or not setting any up at all. You know? So if they've got like a heavy combat army, they'll set up loads of terrain. Right, so they can get, they can break line of sight really easily. If they've got a really shooty army, they'll set up no terrain, or they'll set up loads of terrain on their side that they can hide in and snipe you from afar. You know, um, don't accept it, guys. If the if the if the table looks weird, say so. Say I would actually rather have the terrain. Thank you very much. You know, say so. If you don't say, you're not standing up for yourself. We can't help you. Right. Anyway, well, the game started as you might expect. Angron evaporated, and I was severely outgunned. As soon as he destroyed my angry boy, he started to gloat. He was a genius for bringing knights to fight world eaters. Being new and not wanting to start something in the new place, I held my tongue. Fair enough. But I decided I would do my best and devoted myself to destroying at least one knight and hold my objectives. As during my first game, I was told the fun in losing in 40k is going for a Hail Mary or a glorious last stand. Yeah, that is cool, man. 
that's a good that's a good way to approach your games. By turn two, I knew I would be tabled no matter what I did. Jeff stepped out for a phone call and a smoke break. The large angry man, Mr. T, from before, appeared to uh, 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 before appeared to spectate. He saw the board and, being a nationally ranked competitive player, quickly realised I was set up for failure from the beginning. Without a word to me, he got a store manager over and explained to me what this what this guy was doing. They both confronted Jeff and demanded he restart the game with terrain. Wow. Wow, th th this guy is... Okay, now this guy, Mr. T, seems firm but fair. Very firm but fair. When you first walked into that store, I had a bad feeling about him. I was like, oh, here we go. He's going to be one of these, you know, you know, mouth-breathing, you know. But no, no, he's standing up for you. That's good, that's good. After, after being quite re uh, resistant, he acquiesced. At this point, Mr. T had learned from my newbiness, of my newbiness, and offered to help with rules and strategies, and he gave great advice. Using Angron and, and 8 uh, Bound to clear objectives, and the terrain to stay out of sight but hold objectives. And I start to pull ahead, and Angron is playing Havoc with his armages. A, a, a fantastic, man. Yeah, you're, you're actually seeing how good your army is, or, or at least the fun side of your army, rather than rather than this other guy being pissed off that you dare to play with his toys in front of him. You know, that kind of a thing. Jeff starts complaining that I have help. But every time he makes a noise, Mr. T, very aggressively, asks where in the rulebook it states advice can't be given by a third party. To rub it in, Mr. T also starts narrating how his knights are getting ripped apart. As Jeff has his nameplates on every base, it made it just that much better. By turn 4, Jeff is fuming and pacing the table, but can't say anything because he gets instantly called out. By now, Angron has died and returned two times, but had, but had destroyed two armagers and a full melee knight. After returning the second time, Angron made the charge and destroyed Jeff's second knight and, and takes the pilot's skull for corn. Jeff starts yelling and screaming about how broken Angron is and that it was unfair. Mr. T tells him to leave if he can't be a decent player or person. Jeff then proceeded to, to yell, shut the fuck up. I mean, at, at this point, I, I can't, uh, as much as I'm against Jeff in this, I can't, I, I can't say I wouldn't be having a similar response to somebody like irking me like that after being prodded the entire game. So he, tell, he tells Mr. T to shut the fuck up. He grabs my Angron model. <gasps> okay, and pitches it at the wall. Wow. Okay, yeah, he's crossed the line. A huge line has been crossed. Now, I know violence probably isn't warranted over plastic, but I was moving towards him with intent. When my tactical advisor clamped me on the, on, uh, on the back of my arm and pulled me into him in a bear hug and said, Listen, I'll handle it. Now, I'm a big guy myself, being six foot six and fresh out of the military, and didn't expect to be picked up like a child. <laughs> this Mr. T must be a fucking unit. Jeff was escorted outside by Mr. T and the store staff and was told to pay for a new Angron, or they would hold on to his army until he paid. Jeff threatened to call the police, and wouldn't you know it, Mr. T whipped out his badge. Whoa! What? What? Well, he stormed off, and the store manager gave me his, gave me his Angron that was in the store display case that had been painted by a local painting god. His knights are still at the store in a display case. I've met some of my best friends in this hobby. Anyway... Thanks for always being a voice in the community, and if you're interested, I'll tell you the story of how the store's communal uh, communal deodorant stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do so, man. That's amazing. <laughs> so he's saying, I'm, I'm going to call the police, and the guy literally whips out his badge and goes, I am the fucking police. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. And he never came back for his army as well. This guy must be loaded. Like, uh, this Jeff guy must be absolutely minted to just like leave his army there for the sake of making a point and walk away. My god. There are some special people in this hobby, let me tell you. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Dave says, Hello, North. Hello, mate. Um, my actual name is Dave. Feel free to call me that. I've been listening for a while and thought it's time to share my own hobby nightmare that turned into a hobby heart warmer. All right. I think we need one this week. We've had a, we've had a few heavy ones this week. Around 2017, I had gotten pretty into Magic the Gathering, the format known as Commander, which is currently the main thing in 2023 for the game. 
and was more of an afterthought amongst the wider player base at the time. It was a casual four-player version of the gaming special rules. It's always been kind of fun. What's, what's important here is that around 2017, you could go into a shop, meet random people who were waiting for games and actually have a good time. I have met a lot of good people this way. Our main group was myself, Jesse, Nate and Riley. After a few weeks of playing on the weekends and trying, to, and trying new decks out, I remembered who Riley was. My stomach dropped. Both he and his brother had gotten hit by a distracted driver near my house maybe a year or two earlier. Riley had lived with a serious injury and a long road to recovery after a coma. His brother, sadly, did not survive the incident. Oh, man. Riley was a genuinely good person, well-liked by everybody. He had to take things at his own pace, and we were all happy to help. We were all great friends and would poke fun at each other about, about misplays and saltiness, and had a lot of laughs. Here comes the nightmare, though. One night, his car was broken into, and his backpack with his cards, accessories, and decks were stolen. He was devastated at this. Was several thousand dollars worth of cards gone in a single night? As, as if life hadn't taken enough from Riley, a random person had to take what made him happy as well. The perpetrator was never found. Yeah, I'm going to tell you this now. I've had a few nightmares like this, a few few stories sent in like this. Uh, the police do not take you getting your models or cards stolen off you seriously. They don't. Um, they don't see the value in it. If you say, oh, it's worth X amount of money, they don't see it, man. They just don't see it. They don't get it. They don't understand it. And part of me doesn't blame them for not getting it, you know? It, it, it's it's not. It's a weird hobby. But at the end of the day, yeah, if you get that shit stolen, they're not going to try and find it. You know, they're, they're really not going to put much effort into it. Um, this would normally mean someone is out of the hobby. Luckily, he had a single deck left, and we always had a few spares so he could join us. His birthday was coming up. We planned, without Riley knowing, an event with, uh, with our local game shop that we all went to. About ten of us from the shop put together enough prize support to get an attractive event started. From tournament entries to copies cards he had lost, full booster boxes of the, of the latest premium set to a few cards from someone's collection worth hundreds of dollars. As well as uh, of the supplies he would need, we managed to collectively garner around $3,500 for him in both store credit and product. Needless to say, when he realised that the event was not a run-of-the-mill draft event, but essentially a welcome-back-to-the-hobby-to-you rally event, he was speechless and broke down in tears. Life may take a lot, but we didn't let it take Riley out of our group. Thanks for reading. Love your long time, North. Wow, mate. Mate, what a, what a perfect bookend to quite a difficult week for the, for both everybody here um, in, in Casa North who is dealing with some shit right now. And we've had some some devastatingly heavy stories on the channel over the last couple of weeks. But that is a really wonderful way to bookend the week. So thank you very much, man. That really did put a smile on my face. That's awesome. And uh, listen, the, the hobby can be an, an absolutely frankly amazing place that, that that we don't deserve sometimes there are some people in this hobby that don't deserve to be here let's be honest and i think we've all met those people in fact hobby nightmares kind of celebrates those people in a way because it lets you live vicariously through other hobbyists who've seen this kind of thing before the the amount of people who, who've messaged me saying look i don't have a hobby nightmare but i wanted to thank you and people sending stuff in because something very similar to me has happened in story a Right, and that let me get it out of my system, hearing that somebody else has gone through it and what they did about it, and that's that's what this is all about, right? That's exactly what this is all about. It's about making sure you feel like you've got some a friend in the hobby who's actually talking to you, and making sure that you know you've got someone who is there. Uh, the the Discord link is there for anybody who needs to get through some shit. Uh, I believe the lads are going to be watching a movie tonight over on the over on their voice channel on Discord. So if you're on the Discord, simply hop in, jump on the on on the on the voice channel, and they'll introduce themselves, say hello to you, and and you'll be watching a movie together before you know it, right? I might be going for a pint this evening because it's been one of those kind of weeks. I love your long time. I really hope that you don't mind this being a shorter video because, you know, I've not really, there's not really much I can do about that. I, I've gotten zero free time at the moment, so I'm trying to make the most of it when I can. I love you all. I will speak to you over the weekend. Have a wonderful rest of your day and have a good one, please. I hope all of your dices are rolling sixes. 
unless they're old school leadership checks. Love you. See you later. Bye now.